Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are going to talk about virtual environments in Python. Let's say that you have a project and you are using many libraries inside of it. Sometimes with the library updated codes or how they work can change. So a specific code can work in a version of a library and in the other one, it doesn't. So for managing that and keeping the environment stable, we use virtual environments for projects. Okay, so let's talk about virtual environments. A virtual environment in Python is an isolated workspace that allows you to manage dependencies and packages for different projects separately. So let's say we have a project, let's say app.py. This is our project and we are going to use numpy, pandas and streamlet in it. So we will say import numpy as mp, import pandas as pd and we will say import streamlet as st. But with libraries change with versions, let's say pandas version 1 is different than pandas version 2. So something runs smoothly in pandas 1 can result in error in pandas 2. Sometimes codes change or how they work behind change. So that's why we use virtual environments. We specify the libraries that are used in the project and their versions. For example, I used NumPy 1.0205 in this project. So I save it to a file named requirements.txt. Let's also create that. We are going to do that in this video, requirements.txt. And I'm going to save my libraries in here. So let's go back to the app.py. How we see the versions of the libraries? There are two ways we can do quickly. So one way is we can directly type print numpy version is and it is the currently set one I will say numpy version like this and this also applies for pandas and streamlit and any library we can do it for let's say pandas and streamlit and I'm going to change this to pd then I'm going to change this to streamlit like this and we are going to see that NumPy version is 1.25.1, Pandas version is 2.0.3, and Streamlit version is 1.24.1. So, how I'm going to set this to requirements is, I'm going to say NumPy equals to 1.25.1, like this. So I'm going to continue with others, Pandas equals to 1.2.0.3, and Streamlit equals to 1.21 and 1. 24 and 1, I'm sorry. So that's our requirements file. I'm going to save it, then I'm going to come back to app.py. With this kind of file, we can easily install the dependencies of the projects. Like in most of the Python projects, you are going to see requirements.txt, which the libraries that are used in that project. So since we have that, the other way we can see the library versions that are installed in the current environment is, we can directly say pip or pip3 depends on Mac or Windows you are using pip3 show pandas and it's going to show the pandas version like this and it also it can be applied for numpy pip show numpy I'm sorry pip3 show numpy and we are going to get that so it's 125 and 1 great it also shows you why we record like in using Altair we are going to need numpy and in using scikit-learn scipy we require numpy because most of the libraries not most but most of the data science libraries is built on top of numpy in python okay so i'm going to close this and now i'm going to just delete it and now i'm going to talk about how we can create virtual environments and how we can work with these requirements files or install libraries inside it so it's different for Mac and Windows and I'm going to show you the both. So for Mac side, for creating a virtual environment, we are going to say Python 3 virtual environment and you can give any environment name like environment 1. I'm going to create it like that and it's going to create my virtual environment right now. Also you can see that VS Code displayed. We noticed a new environment has been created. Do we want to select it for the workspace folder? I'm going to say no because I'm going to show you how we can do it with code. And if you want to create this in Windows, you need to use Python virtual environment and environment one. 
I'm not going to make it run right now, but you can use this code for creating a virtual environment in Windows. So this is for Windows. Okay, and now I'm going to delete it. And how we can activate this virtual environment is, again, firstly, I'm going to show you for Mac. I will say source, then I'm going to give my environment name, environment one, and then I will say bin activate. And now you can see in here, environment one is activated and we are inside the environment one. And in those for this process, you need to do environment name, like environment one, you created with Python virtual environment on Windows at the browse tab, then you need to say scripts and activate like this and when you do this you are going to be inside the virtual environment just like in here and let's write it like windows and now we can just delete this and what we can do inside this environment is by the way i'm just going to show you both how you can install libraries one by one or just install the requirements files like this because generally you do this in big projects so for example, let's say we are going to install OpenAI inside this. We can just say pip install OpenAI and it's going to install the OpenAI in this virtual environment. And you can also see a virtual environment is in here, environment one. And in the library side, we are going to see that we are going to have OpenAI in here. Like we can see we have Pydantic, etc. And after the installation completed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can install the requirements file. So I'm going to say install NumPy Panda Streamlit with these versions right now. For this, I'm going to say pip install requirements.txt. And when I do that, it's going to install pandas, NumPy and Streamlit versions that I write on the requirements.txt file or where you download it. It's really important to do this because as I said before, with library changes and updated, the codes can change and probably if you have out of dependencies and packages, it's not going to work if you don't install the proper versions of the packages. And also, we have our environment and our packages right now. What we can do is we can use pip freeze for creating a requirements txt file without doing any effort. So how we can do that? I will say pip freeze and then I'm going to say requirements onetxt and when I run this it's going to create requirements onetxt and it's going to give all the necessary libraries for running this project so I can simply do pip install requirements onetxt and when I do that it's going to install all the packages in here in my environment like this it says requirement always still satisfied for all the packages because we exported it from here, but it was the logic. So you can work with virtual environments in this way. And when you're going to upload your code to somewhere, if you're going to push on GitHub or if you're going to share on your blog, don't forget to give requirements file for people to use your project. Otherwise, they are going to be mismatch between the versions of the libraries and it's going to be pretty hard for people to run the projects on their own. Okay, great. That was all for the coding part of the video. Thanks for watching the video. I'm sharing data science and Python programming content on my channel. You can subscribe for more. Have a great day.